Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. Today we're going to start by working on my bird's nest spruce. My bird's nest spruce is looking really good with the new spring growth on it. I'll spin it around so you can see it from all angles. I'm going to start today by cleaning up the branch structure. Now that all the new shoots have emerged, I can see where I could prune branches back to some of these back buds. I could change the direction of the branches by doing uh, directional pruning. So I can go in and just clean up the branch structure. I'm going to start by looking at the overall silhouette of the tree. And at the moment, the right hand side is too equally balanced to the left hand side. It looks too symmetrical coming up here. It almost looks like an umbrella on top of a, a, a pole. So I'm going to correct that. I'll put my hand in front of the branches, so if I shorten this side, it would make this branch more of a trailing branch. If I were to shorten this side, it would make more of a windswept tree this direction. I don't think I want to change the design dramatically or, you know, a major change to the style of the tree. I, I think, you know, in the past I've had this as my trailing branch, my longest branch and more compact on this side, kind of getting the movement back over to this side of the tree to kind of help balance the tree, even though it's, you know, leaning to the right-hand side quite a bit. It's an off-balance style of tree or slanting tree. If we look down from the top view, you can see branches that are in the shade. Don't get any new shoots. They need the light. My friendly neighborhood spider is still cruising around in the upper branches of the tree. There he is. He's going down the trunk now. <laughs> it's a jumping spider. Hello. Hi. <laughs> He's looking at me now. Oh my goodness. Hi. I'll start the work up in the apex of the tree and I want the apex to come kind of forward. So I want to remove these longer branches in the back so the highest point of my tree is right here. I'll start the pruning now, removing some of these branches. There's a duplicate branch here I can remove like that. I can shorten this one, keeping my one new bud there. I can shorten this one there, and I can remove this one like that. I've got a branch growing the wrong direction here, so I'll cut that one off like that. And that gets my apex cleaned up quite nicely. When viewed from the front, I've got a branch that comes straight out towards the viewer, so I'll remove that one also. Like that. There's a hanging branch. This is part of the apex. And there's a branch hanging down, and I, I don't want branches hanging down on my apex. I would rather that lower down on the tree, so going to remove that hanging branch like that. I've got a branch here that crosses the trunk line so I'll remove that one also like that. I'm going to do some pruning to maintain my triangular silhouette on this tree. Spruce trees generally grow in a triangular form so I want to keep that you know triangular form in this tree also. All right let's have a look at it. So I've got a lot of branches sticking up here that I think I want to reduce back and keep these more of the weeping type branches. So I'll prune off that new shoot there. I need to reduce this one back here. And I have a bud in closer to the trunk, so I'll prune that branch back. I think I'm going to reduce this one even more. So I've got two buds back here, so I'll take the tip off like that. It would be nice if I could reduce this one further, and 
I think I can. I've got two buds back there, so I can take the tip off that one. That's looking better on this side. I'm going to do the same on this side of the tree. So I want to keep this side a little shorter, I think, so I'm going to reduce this back to here. Like that. Always keeping new shoots on every branch. And I'm always checking from the front view to see my progress. So I want to reduce this one back, so I'll reduce this shoe to here. Like that. That's helping me get my triangular form here. So it's looking very rounded here. So I'm going to try and straighten that out if I can. So I'll take off this new shoot at the tip here. Like that. I can reduce this shoot back to here. I've got a shoot sticking up here that I can remove. Like that. And I may want to get rid of this branch sticking up here and keep my ones that are fanning outwards. So I think I'll do that. Bit of a hard prune here. Here I go. Like that. That's getting a more triangular form to the tree. I'll just take a tip shoot off here. And I think I'll take the tip off here. I've got lots of branches in this area, so I don't want it getting any longer. Otherwise, it'll shade out this branch below. These two branches below, they're kind of interfering with each other a little bit, so I may have to do a little reducing here. I'm going to take this branch off like that. And I'm going to take this branch off. They were kind of shading out this part of the tree. I could reduce this one back here. I don't want these ones in the apex getting too long. I can reduce this one back here also. Just making that a little more compact overall. There's a look at the front of the tree. And I think that little bit of cleanup did a lot for the tree. It made it look a little more miniature and more compact and has a little more shape to the canopy. Here's a look at the shoots I took off. So not a whole lot, just enough to clean the tree up. My next step for this tree will be to clean up the landscape, getting the moss away from the lip of the pot, clearing out the moss from the base of the tree, and just giving it a general tidy up. I'll start by cleaning the moss away from the lip of the pot, just cutting it back. Next, I'll get out the tweezers and work away at the base of the tree, clearing away the moss, exposing the root base a bit, and getting that moss away from the bark on the lower part of the tree because the moss will hold moisture in there and it'll rot your bark away. The tree looks good and healthy this year. Lots of good shoots on it. I didn't get any dieback or anything, so that's a good, good sign. Tree's healthy at the moment. And the healthier tree is the number one factor in bonsai. You can't do any work on the tree unless it's healthy. I've got a lot of rocks in here too that I don't want totally covered in moss. So I'll have to just, you know, work away slowly. You can see how the base of the tree is quite moist. The moss is, was holding the moisture in there. And that's what you don't want. You want your moisture in the soil. So I've got a layer of sand on top here. That's probably why the moss is growing so well. Moss likes to grow on top of a layer of sand. Here's a look at the really nice root that I've exposed now. That was covered in moss. So it looks really cool. It looks like it's, you know, anchoring the tree into the ground. It's its lifeline, that one root. There's other roots here, but uh, that one's an important root for sure. 
certainly gives the base of the tree some character. So I'm just clearing out the other roots here and getting the moss all away from the base. I've got the moss cleaned away from the root base of the tree. So next I'll get a toothbrush and some rainwater and just scrub away any remaining moss. All right, here I go. These roots eventually get a nice flaky bark on them also, just like the trunk of the tree. So that's looking much better. I've got all the moss away from the base of the tree now. Yeah, I think that's quite good. At the moment, the landscaping looks a little too much like a nice green lawn. So I'm going to take out pieces of moss and make them look more like bushes to give a more rugged landscape that suits the style of the tree. So I'll just kind of remove sections of moss, keeping a tuft here and there to look like a, a bush, and kind of making them round. And that'll give it a natural kind of look to the landscape. Okay, I think it's time to get a layer of sand on now. And this sand is a mixture of playground sand and the white sandblasting sand. So it just makes it a little lighter color than, you know, just using straight playground sand. And I think it gives it more of a natural kind of color. It also contrasts nicely with the roots. So if you use just playground sand, it would be almost the same color as the root system and it, the roots wouldn't stand out as much. So. so it has a couple of benefits. Now there may be cases where you don't want a light sand, but uh, I think with this rugged looking tree, I think it suits it. It looks more bleached in the sun. And when I water this, all the sand will level itself out and fill in all the, the voids and the... Yeah, just look more more natural. Okay, I'll get the watering can and we'll give it a good watering. All right, here I go with the water. You can see how the sand flows into all the low spots, flows away from the high spots, surrounds the moss really nicely so the moss blends in with the landscape. And I think that'll do. I've got the bird's nest spruce all cleaned up. It's a very small tree, but it's very powerful. Let's go in and have a look at it. It's time now for today's update. Today's update is my American Elm bonsai, and it's leafed out really well this year. The leaves are actually getting quite large for the first time since I dug it up from the front garden, which is good. It shows the root system's getting nice and healthy. You can see the radial roots forming down there. So that's also good that it's, uh, you know, recovered and growing well. So today, you know, usually you wait till you get, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight leaves on it. So I could give it a pruning. If the leaves were small and weak looking, then I'd let it grow longer. But because they're so large, the leaves, I think I can give it a pruning today. So here I go. Because this tree is a clip and grow tree, I'll be using directional pruning when I'm pruning the branches. And every time I prune one branch, I'll get two branches coming off. So it'll increase the density of the branching in the upper canopy. I want this tree to have a sort of a umbrella style canopy 
that's how the American elms seem to grow in nature. So I'll start with some of the more vigorous shoots here. And I'm always looking for a leaf that faces outwards. So all my branches fan outwards on the tree. On a healthy elm, you'll be doing this operation probably four to five times a season. They can grow with a lot of vigor when they uh, start getting a good root system. I'm looking at the strength of the branch. If it's long and has big leaves, I prune it back harder. If it's a weaker shoot, I prune it a little less. You can also look for areas of congestion where branches are overlapping each other and kind of thin them out. I've left a few lower branches here just to uh, create a little more branching than just one trunk dividing into two in one spot. So I've got a few other branches I can integrate into the umbrella style canopy. So I'm just going through the tree now looking for branches growing the wrong direction and overlapping on top of other branches. You want every branch to get its own spot of sunlight. So that's looking much better. I'll stand back and have a look at it now. That's got my American Elm back on track, making it a little more compact and starting to get some shape in the canopy. I'm hoping I have to do this, you know, as I say, four or five times this summer. I'm hoping the tree grows with a lot of vigor and I can get, you know, by the end of fall, quite a nice canopy on the tree. It's nice to be working on the branch structure of the tree. I was several years developing the root system into a nice radial root system. And now I can concentrate on the trunk and the branches and work on all three things at once, the roots, the trunk and the branch structure. I'll give you a truck update also. I've been cleaning the engine compartment, kind of uh, just cleaning all the grease off the engine. I'll be coming in here and painting various things, just cleaning it up so it's not a kind of a dirty mess. So that's one thing I've been working on. Oh, I also got my wipers, the squirters working. The hoses were all rotted out. So I got new uh, wiper squirter lines that go to the tank down there. So now I have working squirters on my wipers and I also got new wiper blades. So now it works in the rain. I filled the truck up with gasoline and ever since then it smelled like gas. So I took the rear seat out and I checked the gas tank over and I found in this corner there was a pinhole so I got some gas tank epoxy. I sanded it down to a really shiny metal using 400 grit sandpaper. Then I applied, I pushed this putty on it, gas tank putty, and I'm sure that'll do the trick for that corner. I also noticed, and I think this is the major part of the smell, was over here, the gas line coming from the tank to the engine has got a flexible hose put in here with looks like twist ties and it's leaking out of there. Um, there was also a little bit of leakage around the sender unit which you know tells you your gas level in the tank. So I just tighten these screws a bit and I think that'll solve that problem. But this I'll have to get fixed. The uh, I'll have to replace this tubing either the whole steel line or you know get something that seals better than this uh, this setup. Having the rear seats removed will also give me a chance to paint all this section underneath the gas tank. Uh, get it all cleaned up and nice. Up front in the passenger side, I noticed there was some water or some moisture down here at the base of the floor. And I don't want to rot out my, new, my newly put in floor. So you can see the carpet's still a little wet there. So I had a look up top and they fixed all the major holes up here, except right here. You can see 
right here there's a couple of holes that run down the C pillar and into the passenger compartment so I've got to get I think I'll use the same putty there it comes with a putty in the factory as a sealant along this lip so I'm going to get some more of that gas tanky putty and clean this area up and squeeze it into that hole and I think that'll seal the roof I've also got my hitch put back on the truck in case I need to tow a trailer or anything. There was some brake fluid that was leaking out of the uh, brakes and onto the rear wheel here and it took off some of the silver paint. And I used to have a black wheel on this truck and I always liked the wheels black. So I did a computer mock-up to see what it would look like with black wheels instead of silver wheels. So I'll show you that. Julian really liked the black wheels on it, and I do too. I think it, uh, you can't tell where the wheel ends and the tire begins. It just makes it look like it's all tires, the truck. So, yeah, that'll be coming up in the future. I'll paint all the wheels black. I've got a lot of the underneath painted red now. I've still got to touch up the frame there, just get rid of the, uh, the overspray on it and just keep the frame all black. I painted the exhaust and so far the paint's hanging on it. Uh, it's a high temperature paint and it hasn't burned off or anything so that's good. So yeah still working away underneath the truck getting it all nice and shiny and clean so it looks kind of like a show truck underneath and a beat up old truck on the top. We've got some brand new little baby silky chickens. Let's go over and have a look at them. Here come the babies. That's all for today. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the Bonsai Zone. <laughs>